it all hinges around China. Um, the slowdown in the GDP growth rate last year, going into this year as well, um, down to a rate that people reckon somewhere between two and four percent, and not the six to seven percent claimed by the Chinese, has affected all of the phenyl acetone industry globally, but particularly the new plants which have come on stream in the last 18 to 24 months. Some 2.2 million tons has been brought on stream, primarily in China itself, um, but we've just seen two new plants come on in the last two months, one in Korea and one in Thailand, which were aimed primarily at exports to China. This has led, at the moment, to an overcapacity globally of somewhere around about 33 to 35%. However, the real problem lies further downstream because the main use for phenol and acetone is in BPA and from BPA into epoxy resins. And we estimate that the overcapacity here is well over 40%. This means that the new producers which have come on stream in the last two years have been calculating on these downstream consumption plants operating at 100%, which has really given a false and blown up image of what the actual market for phenol and acetone are, particularly in China. And unless this is tackled downstream, there will be still some new plants coming on stream. There is one scheduled for 2019 in China, but more importantly, there is one scheduled to come on stream in Saudi Arabia next year. And the problem is they really are struggling to place their phenol and acetone. Acetone is an easy product to place because it's a very easy chemical to move, it's an easy solvent, and the markets in the solvent sector are large. But with the slowdown in the GDP in China, in particular for acetone in the housing and construction industry, has been a disaster. The bursting of the Chinese housing bubble in 2014 and 15 has seen the acetone demand reduce significantly. Phenol for these producers is the real problem because moving the phenol is expensive. There are very small free markets in the US and in Europe for phenol and therefore most of the market is taken up already by contract business. Breaking into long term existing contracts with major downstream consumers is a difficult task for any producer, but with phenol it is even more so. Therefore the netbacks to the Saudi Arabian plants and the netbacks to the Korean and Thailand plants from potential sales in the US and in Europe would be horrendous. No phenol producer anywhere in the world today is making money. They're all losing money and up until recently it's been acetone which is only 0.6 of every tonne of phenol produced has been holding the complex above the water level. Today this is not the case. Acetone prices have fallen. Only Europe on a temporary basis has very high acetone prices, relatively speaking, but every phenol acetone producer outside of Europe and outside of the US is losing money hand over fist. As I indicated, the real solution lies downstream. Capacity on epoxy resins and BPA has to be shut down. There has been rationalization already in the US. Uh, there has been cutbacks in output in Europe. And I believe at some stage with the development of polycarbonate in Asia, there may well be cutbacks in BPA production in Europe at some stage over the next two to three years. But the real 
crux of the problem lies in Asia. It lies not so much in China itself, but in those countries outside of China, which have built up capacity for export to China. Now that China is self-sufficient on paper, in phenol, acetone, BPA, epoxy resins, also in MMA and caprolactone, capacity has to be closed down in Asia. And the Asians are not used to shutting down capacity, unlike the Europeans and the Americans. But it's something that they have to face because, as I said, it's not just the phenol and acetone businesses that are losing money, but it's the BPA and the epoxy resin business as well. Until that happens, the markets are going to be faced with this overcapacity, potential oversupply, and continuing losses.